it's a meeting that's ripe for rivalry. It's very interesting. We've got Premier Wen Jiabao turning up, President Obama turning up, uh, Prime Minister of India, Japan, Australia, uh, the ASEAN countries. This is a powerful meeting. The East Asia Summit is taking over APEC as the most significant forum for the region because it affects not just economic matters, but security matters. And so the security matters are going to feature prominently, even though Premier Wen Jiabao has indicated he is very keen for it to focus on economic matters. So what do you think would be the next step here in this uh, ongoing uh, fallout from the territorial dispute in the South China Sea? It's a good question. Uh, certainly the declaration on the conduct of, um, in the South China Sea, the DOC, uh, Dr. Surin Pitsuwan, the current Secretary General, the outgoing Secretary General of ASEAN, has indicated that ASEAN is now pretty much united behind a position uh, supporting a code of conduct. Now, that is a pretty significant step if it's correct. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he can hold Laos and Cambodia to that line in their negotiations over the next day or so. But that is certainly the most contentious one. If he can get agreement, if he can get ASEAN to speak with one voice, he will have achieved a major uh, milestone. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting to reflect for a moment there on whether Premier Wen Jiabao is prepared to make a concession, because such a concession and on agreeing to a code of conduct it would, would actually put him in, in good stead in terms of his public uh, image in the region. You've got to remember that a code of conduct is something that has been missing for the South China Sea, and it's something that even at the darkest days of the Cold War, the Americans and the Soviets had a code of conduct. There is no such thing in the South China Sea. So there's strong reasons, strong justification for a good, clear code of conduct to be agreed upon. All right. On the issue of Burma, uh, Professor, it has had an extraordinary transition into a democratic state, but it has also uh, been plagued with problems, particularly the violence in Rakhine State. What do you foresee happening around this issue during ASEAN this week? This is a thorny one. There's been the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration that's just been made, and Myanmar has signed up to it. Uh, Myanmar, Burma. It depends on who you ask. Most people are now saying it's Myanmar. Uh, some in some quarters are still calling it Burma. But uh, the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration is a, is a significant step. Some people are questioning the appropriateness of some of the clauses in them. But I think in, in, on balance, given the cultural, historical and religious dimensions of South, Southeast Asia, it's not unreasonable Professor, to have certain clauses.